What are some of the symptoms of mental illness? How does somebody know that somebody is mentally ill? I want to, this might help us. And please, if you have some symptom here, don't say it. Just don't say, even, don't shake your head. Don't even make any noise. Number one, if you are struggling right now with appetite and weight, either you are losing weight or you are gaining weight or your appetite is not there or you are gaining more appetite, there is a challenge we need to address. Right now, if you are struggling with the sleep, sleep has refused, you are struggling with the sleep, please you need to seek for help early. Anger. If you are angry, and, and even sometimes you don't know why you are angry. Now we are in the local community. Do you know when you are angry, even like your local chicken run away from you? Try it. When you are angry, chicken run away from you. You know that you are peaceful at home if local chicken come close to you during like this hot of the day. If you're under the tree, they will come. You know you are peaceful. But when you are angry, they run away from you. Fatigue and loss of energy. There are times you just feel you are weak and you're fatigued, even when you have not done any serious work. Sometimes you feel hopeless and helpless, you feel you're not good enough. When you see your colleague, clergy, you feel, ah, I'm not good enough. Loss of interest in the daily activities. You lose interest in the daily activities that you even used to love. There's a challenge. Withdrawal and isolation, when you want to stay alone, you, you, you don't want people, you want to stay alone in isolation. You just want to be by yourself. Lack of basic personal hygiene. If you are here and the, uh, some of these days you are struggling to go to the bathroom, there's a problem. You show up anyway, you put on what is available. You don't mind whether it is clean or not clean, you just show up. There is a challenge. When you fail to concentrate, but you are just a busy body, you are restless, there's a challenge. If you have unexplained body aches and pain, your body is paining you, you go to hospital, they test and they say there's no sickness, but your body is paining you. Please, that is not to do with your physical body, it is a mental issue. Seek for help. If now you're in a place where you have your own meeting with yourself, you ask your question, you have your own body meeting, you ask your question, you answer it yourself. If it is a funny answer, you laugh at it. You're having your own meeting with yourself, please, things aren't well. If you begin to see things others don't see, leave along the visions from God, but you're seeing things others don't see, you're hearing the voices others don't hear, please, seek for help. You hear some unnecessary noise around your ears, Wee! and you are not comfortable, please, engage. If you are sometimes suicidal, Please engage. What are we just talking about? These, all these are symptoms of mental illness. But some of us, we go through these things, but it's like, still at a mild condition. If you seek for help early, you will be helped early. But if you don't seek for help and it over accumulates, the day it uh, overpowers you, then we might hear stories. That Reverend so and so was seen running naked. How he removed the clothes, that is when he has now gone beyond. I, please, let's not go there. What are some of the causes? Current environmental challenges. What are some of these current environmental challenges? These are issues which are within the environment. These are issues within our communities. These are current issues. Number one, for example, if you are here and you're a clergy and you got married some years back, up to now there is no child, I can assure you, it can break you down. That's why among local community here after a wedding, people expect that within three weeks there must be some symptoms of malaria. And if the malaria symptoms are not there, after one year, people will begin to talk. And this talking begins to affect you. Lack and loss. Any lack of something and any loss of something, whether a person, property, whatever it is, it affects, it causes. Property or financial loss. Even right now, if you lose just 50,000, you lose it now. Ha! You will scratch your head, you will search everywhere. And you will be very confused. Why? You have lost something. Rejection. 
When you go to a parish or you have gone to a place, but then you feel you have been not, you're not wanted there, you are rejected, you are, you are abandoned, nobody wants you there, definitely you will ask God, why? Why me? Poverty is an issue. Poverty plays a very big role here because poverty brings a lot of issues. This is where lack of everything is. Because if you can't afford, and then maybe mama is asking for sugar, you can't afford, you don't have the money, and then everything is falling apart, children are not at school, all these issues begin to overwhelm you. Poor health, I talked about it. Sometimes routine responsibilities affect us, because you know in the morning you wake up, this is what you do, and then, you, all of, and then after many years you don't see any progress, you begin to ask yourself, did I make a wrong choice? Did I make a mistake? Abrupt disasters, we were just from COVID. We know the impact of COVID. Still living, up to now, we are still living in the impact of COVID. Marital and relationship problems, issues in your house, issues in your bedroom, issues around your family. If there are challenges, I can assure you, it will throw you out of balance. Combustion with others. We've come here, some of us came driving, some of us came riding, some of us came riding bicycle, others came riding motorcycle, others came on foot. Then sometimes you see yourself and then you're like, but why me? So and so is just newly ordained. I've served God, why? Because you're beginning to compare yourself with another person. Finally, childhood trauma. The pains we've been through childhood. The painful experiences, the painful memories that we've been there. So these are all under the current environmental issues. We have genetical factors. That's why sometimes you will hear that so and so the grandfather even had this condition. Because it becomes a genetical issue. That's why even sometimes when you come and then you are, you are assessed, and then if you have some, you have been diagnosed with some condition, and then they will ask, in your family, do you have a history? Because we want to ascertain whether this is coming from the other one, or this is something that is from environmental factors. We have the drug and alcohol use, and listed drugs. We have biological factors. That's why I talked about the issue of uh, epilepsy, autism, and all of that. These are biological issues. Early childhood, negative environments. I talked about this already. Neglect, where you have been maybe neglected and abused and all of that. Trauma and stress also play a very big role here. And then the personality uh, factors. Now, what are the, some of the effects? We struggle with unforgiveness, even as clergy. That's why sometimes we, you will hear others, not those ones who are not here. You will hear others say, ha, so and so, the way so and so. I don't know if I will really forgive him unless they come to apologize, but they won't come. But you struggle with unforgiveness. And then when you are bitter, you transfer this anger and frustration to people who are even innocent. You breed on those who didn't cut you. Why? It is transferred anger. That's why we have anger and bitterness here, also as an issue here. Because now we transfer this anger from one person to another. That's why in our communities, I'm sure you've seen women who abuse chicken. I think that's why chicken don't like those who are angry, because they're innocent. But you find a woman abusing the legs of chicken when the target is a man or some other person. Domestic violence. Now, domestic violence, I know for us clergy, it is not very common, especially the physical violence. However, the verbal assaults, the things that you speak to your spouses, or the words that are spoken, those wounding words are the ones that break. So the issue here, it may not be the physical violence because now we fear we, are, we have color, we cannot have physical uh, counseling with the, the five-fold minutes, we cannot work very well here because we are a clergy. But then sometimes the words that we use keeps haunting us and keeps affecting us. Um, jealousy, I talked about it all, already, because we, deserve, we think we deserve the best ourselves, so, so others don't deserve it. That's where I talked about this, that jealousy is the last class you attend before you become a full-time witch. Greed. Greed is one of the things that is now coming here. That's why greed is killing our nation. Greed for power, greed for money, Greed everywhere, which is affecting us. Homicide, suicide, and murder. These are common nowadays. 
not just among the clergy, but even everywhere in our communities, because we are in the communities, by the way. So, but these issues are there. We are trying to put up, by the grace of God, a rehab in Moyo, because uh, these last three weeks, sorry, these last three months, we've been heavily involved in some interventions in Moyo, because Moyo, I think, is now becoming the leading area for suicide, especially Metro Sub County. And uh, I've been running some of the programs on Radio Purchase in Moyo. And we have been trying to go to schools, trying to go to communities. Why? Suicide has become suicide. Murder has become murder. Homicide has become homicide. And all these are happening because of mental health crisis. Poor health. Right now, honestly, don't answer me, but how is your health? Could you have lost weight or you have gained weight? No answer for that one. Personal reflection. Are you suffering from ulcers? Unexplained X headache. One side of the head is aching, one side is fine. Sometimes it is only in the middle aching. And then sometimes because we have ch tested all our sicknesses and then the doctor tell, told us that, that there is no sickness, and then we quickly say, Lubarati. Even as a clergy, I think now Lubarati. Elders need to, to sit. We need, I need to inquire from elders what is the problem. No, the problem is not with the elders. The problem is mental health. <laughs> this issue of drug use is common in our communities. I want to summarize. That's why in our communities, when some people enter here, they don't want to leave. In our communities, that's why we are seeing this even in Arua city and other cities. That's why we are having this. Our young people are really taking it to a, an, another level. Not living our authentic nature, because that's why we are trying to live to please others, but when we're not ourselves. What is the barrier to treatment? Stigma. Stigma is where the problem is. How do people know, how do people see me going for treatment? How do people see me when I access mental health services? How can I go to the rural regional hospital here and tell uh, them that I have this problem? How will they see me with my caller? How can they? Please, stigma is where the issue is, but help is available. By the grace of God, on 14th of May, I am launching this book officially in Kampala where Dr. Raymond Odokonyero, one of the psychiatric lecturers of Makerere, is the keynote speaker. But apart from him, I have four people who were from Butabika. And they have recovered and they are doing well. Please, help is available. You can receive treatment, everything. Because all these are problems that we suffer from. There's no health without mental health. My hope for us is this. We can move from left to right by his grace. How do you move there? What is the, the issue here? Help is available. Let's seek for help. Talk to some people. Talk to somebody. Why more men are committing suicide is because for us men we are told that you be a man. Don't talk like women. Women can talk the issues and they get helped. But for us men, it is the opposite. Talk to somebody. Talk to a colleague. Talk to your leaders. Talk to professional counselors. Talk to psychologists. Talk to people. Seek for help. Like I said, complication is the stigma. What is the treatment plan? I have good news for you. There are three types of treatment. Number one, psychological therapy. Why? A person is a person, me and you are here because we have the body, we have the soul, we have the spirit. The soul needs somebody to be able to get encouragement from. The soul needs some counselor. The soul needs a psychologist. The soul needs a reverend to talk to. The soul needs some encouragement. That's why David says in Psalms 42, as the deer pants for water, my soul pants for you. Go to verse 3 of Psalms 42. My tears have been my food day and night when men continually ask, where is your God? These are issues within the community that is making you cry. Somebody needs to talk to you. Medication. You need the medicine to treat the body. Don't feel shy to get medications. 
That's why if you have depression, you're given antidepressants. If you have psychotic uh, issues, you're given antipsychotic drugs. If you have bipolar, you're given medications that can balance your mood. So, the, so that you're not uh, very sad, again, very happy, you are in the balance. <laughs> you need it. Number three, spiritual treatment. That's where prayers work. Fellowship. Jesus met a man who was, who had a legend. Remember that story? You cannot treat a spiritual issue with the kind of weapons. That's why the spirit needs the spirit. The soul needs the counselor, the body needs medication. That's why these issues are here. What um, am I saying? Number one, we need psychoeducation. This is what we are doing now. Psychoeducation. Giving you information. And then you manage as much as you can to reduce the stress. And I can assure you, you are stressed. You are number one person who is stressing you too much is your spouse. I will stand here and say it. Why? Your spouse does what you don't like. You want the spouse to be in your own image, yet your spouse is in the image of God because God said, let's make man in our own image. But you want your spouse to be in your own image and in your own likeness so that they can do what you like. Yet you are different. <laughs> Narrative therapy, talk to somebody. Narrate the issues that you are going through. Psychological treatment, this is where psychotherapy is. Pharmacological treatment, this is where medications is. Spiritual treatment, this is where prayer is. Fellowship is. Read the Bible. Seek encouragement. And all will be well. All of these need to be in place. Call to action. As individuals, what can we do? As I summarize. Number one, you need to heal. Which begins with acceptance. Accept that you need help. If you live in denial, you will be like me who didn't bathe for a month. But living in denial. Because this is, these are my stories. You know, taking a month and you have not bathed. But you are saying you are okay. And you are working, moreover. <laughs> Accept that you need help. Where you need help. That's where you can actually even respond quickly to treatment and help. Seek for help at all times. Communicate your needs to your supervisor. Now that we are clergy here, you have supervisors. Engage your supervisors. That's why you have the archdeacon. Go to him and explain your issues. Seek for help. That's why you have stages of leadership there. Talk to your supervisor. Seek for help. Seek for guidance. Choose to live a balanced life. Because your life, you need to, at home, you need to be a father and a husband and a good neighbor. At the same time, you need to know that you are a man of God who must communicate God's wisdom and all that. So you must be able to balance your life. Open dialogues. Please talk. Don't fear to speak up where you need to speak up. Familiarize yourself with the available mental health resources. Read about mental health issues. Read about challenges that are affecting. Read about books that can help you build your ministry. Read about issues that can help you improve on yourself and improve on your ministry. As an organization, what do we need to do? Call to the supervisors. What do we need to do? I want to appreciate the leadership. Because this is one of the things that the leadership is doing. Educate teams. This is where we foster awareness and understanding on the various mental health challenges. These are the issues that now, now we are discussing. This kind of forum helps us to be able to understand some of these issues. And then number two, promote inclusiveness. Encourage a stigma-free environment for open discussions. If, like, I'm very convinced some of us here, we have never told our colleagues about our problems, yet we have the problems. That's why we're not sleeping. Sleep refuses because of worry. You are worried, you have so many questions in your mind, but you have no answers for them. Finally, ensure flexible working hours and the conditions to support um, the clergy who could be struggling. And how can they know that you are struggling when you have not told them? So my call here is speak to the, your supervisors. Once they know your condition, then they can be able to see how to support you and how to help you. May God bless you all. That's the end. If there's one or two questions. Thank you very much.
This question. Ah, okay. Um, one thing uh, I want to say is, in the market out there, the books are a bit uh, somehow they say it is a bit expensive. Some people say the other say it is cheap. Out there, the books each is at, at fifty thousand. But uh, while I was here, I've been thinking if we can uh, make. Um, um, something so that maybe we can give for the clergy at half price. I think that will do. That is an offer that uh, I'm thinking. And that one we can uh, discuss it and then we can see how to maybe deliver it here or deliver it to the people concerned and then they can see how to distribute to the clergy. But that is only an offer for the clergy. But out there, that is the price. Number two, we are putting up a rehabilitation centre in Moyo where sometimes maybe you might need one-on-one -on -one sessions. You can feel free to approach. Sometimes you, you might need to come with your spouse for some of these uh, uh, sessions and the therapies. You might need, so we are, we are going to be very open and uh, uh, this is coming too abrupt, but uh, we are going to request, I don't know how, because tentatively the team in Moya has already proposed the 25th, sorry, 24th of May for the official launch. But we are going to bring the letters to some of you. And uh, I don't know if it can be very, but uh, try to help me check your programs. And at least 24th May, we can see if we can all be together in Moyo as we launch the Rehabilitation Center. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry.